in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen my dear brother and sister fraternal greetings to you from the carmelite fathers and warm welcome to carmel light reflection on the day's readings it's the 23rd of april friday of the third week of easter this day is marked as world book and copyright day and today we remember blessed teresa maria of the cross manetti a virgin and founder of the carmelite sisters of saint teresa now larissa will give us more details into the life and mission of saint teresa maria today on the 23rd of april we commemorate blessed teresa maria of the cross who was a carmelite nun and founder teresa maria manetti whose nickname was bettina was born in florence in italy daughter of salvatore and rosa manetti who came from modest social conditions teresa had one brother adamo raffaello she lived her entire life in her small village and had a strict and christian upbringing bettina had a cheerful energetic disposition and a talent for organization and all the qualities which make for a good leader at the age of 21 she rented a home with two other women who dedicated themselves to a life of prayer penance and charity they cared for the sick and the poor and taught catechism to children they were inspired by the writings of saint teresa of avila and had a special devotion to her many other women joined the small group the women were admitted to the theresian third order and bettina took the new name of teresa maria of the cross Two years later she joined the discarded carmelites as a nun over the next few years she started schools in several italian cities each with its little group of carmelite teachers her institute of teaching nuns received approval from pope saint pius x on february 27 1904 as the carmelite sisters of saint teresa of florence with a mission to teach and care for children especially orphans like her inspiration saint teresa of avila teresa of the cross met with much resistance to her work with the poor much slander about her personal life and a long period of spiritual dryness but all who met her commented on the air of joy and peace she brought to her work she lived joyfully body and soul the mystery of the cross in full conformity to the will of god teresa maria was outstanding for her love for the eucharist and her maternal care for children and for the poor her life was motivated by a consuming love for christ and a desire to save souls she endeavored to live according to god's holy will and took delight in all the crosses which came through this purpose in a prayer she wrote to suffer to suffer always suffer do what you want with me it's enough that i save souls for you the daily source for her energy was her devotion to the blessed sacrament and to the virgin mary teresa maria lived without gratification instead seeking and finding peace of heart through a simple lifestyle and routine This simplicity allowed her to quietly explore the depths of her own soul where she continually united herself with the Lord in each aspect of her day. She died at Campi by Senzio on April 23, 1910 and was beatified on October 1986 by Pope John Paul II. Placing all our petitions before her today, let us pray. O oh God, by the inexhaustible grace of the eucharist you enable the virgin blessed teresa maria to walk the way of the cross and filled her with maternal concern for the weak and the poor 
Through her intercession, may we too be strengthened by the bread of angels to share joyfully in the suffering of Christ and to participate in works of love for the establishment of your kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We now focus on the first reading taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 1 to 20. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he went on his way, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven shone around him. And falling to the ground, he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. Saul rose from the ground, and although his eyes were opened, he saw nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas, look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying. And he has seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints at Jerusalem. But here, he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house, and laying his hands on them, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road by which you came has sent me so that you can regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized, and taking food, he was strengthened. For some days he was with the disciples at Damascus, and immediately he proclaimed Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our first reading today, we hear perhaps the most miraculous story of conversion 
in all of human history. Paul, who is still Saul at this time, enters the story still breathing murderous threats against a new way of Jesus and exits it with scales falling from his eyes. It's a complete turning around of a life that we witness today, one that requires much from Paul, openness, trust, courage, and an enormous humility in admitting the prior misdirection of his life. The power of Christ to transform a heart of stone into total service and discipleship is without limitations. It's a beautiful story. But it's not the only beautiful thing happening in that reading. The story of Ananias has its own beauty to it. Ananias, who was himself going to be one of the targets of Saul's murderous threats, finds it possible to trust God. And not only to trust God, but to forgive. And not only to forgive, but to bless the very one at whose hands he would have otherwise suffered. It must have been a shock for him to be asked by God to accept, forgive, bless one who was willing to use jail and torture to enforce religious unity. It was so much a shock that Ananias, though he was willing to be obedient, actually asked God whether he had it right. Are you sure it's this man you want me to accept? He asks. But Ananias goes and accepts and forgives and blesses. Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus who appeared to you on the way by which you came, he prays, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Through his modest act of praying with Saul, Saul's life is transformed. His mission changes. That new mission takes him right into the synagogue to tell about this Jesus he had previously been resisting so boldly. For many of us, Ananias' subtle transformation may seem more realistic than Saul's dramatic, life-changing experience. It's not very often that scales fall from our eyes and our whole lives are turned around. Much more often, what this Christian life consists in is being willing to forgive, bless, accept those who have wounded us. Much more often, our task is the task of Ananias, the daily task of one who has been and is still being converted to God. My dear brother and sister, two of the qualities which are the hallmarks of God are steadfast kindness or loving kindness and enduring fidelity. These two qualities are present or mentioned in the shortest psalm in the book of the Psalms, that is Psalm 117, today's responsorial. In the second and final verse of this psalm we hear, for steadfast is God's kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. 
we pray that psalm now your response go into all the world and proclaim the gospel go into all the world and proclaim the gospel o oh, praise the lord all you nations acclaim him all you peoples go into all the world and proclaim the gospel for his merciful love has prevailed over us and the lord's faithfulness endures forever go into all the world and proclaim the gospel glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen prayer for relief from the corona virus almighty and merciful god who show your love to all creation everywhere hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the corona virus in various parts of the world we come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak for a healing of those affected for the victims and their families we thank you for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine we pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic we pray that the vaccine be available for all our people even the poor and those in rural areas we pray for doctors nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts we pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people we make this prayer through christ our lord amen And finally, Pope Francis today reflected on the importance of vocal prayer. He was speaking to the faithful during his catechesis at the weekly Wednesday general audience. Christopher Wells has more. La preghiera e il dialogo con Dio. Prayer, Pope Francis said at his general audience on Wednesday, is dialogue with God, and every creature in a certain sense engages in that dialogue. The Holy Father's catechesis began with a reflection on words which not only proceed from us but also to some extent shape us. In the Bible, words bring everything to light, ensuring that nothing human is excluded or censored. That's a Pope Francis is why sacred scripture teaches us to pray, sometimes even with bold words. The human authors of the Bible are intent upon showing humanity as it really is, to the point even of including harsh expressions against enemies. words he said that belong to human reality and which find their way into the sacred scriptures pope francis noted that the first human prayer is always a vocal recitation per prime si muovono sempre le labbra the lips always move first he said or recognizing the prayer does not consist in simply repeating words without meaning he nonetheless insisted that vocal prayer is the surest means of speaking with god feelings he said can be uncertain and unpredictable as can the graces that come from prayer at times the mysterious prayer of the heart can be lacking vocal prayer however can always be practiced he said and is necessary even when our feelings are confused and so pope francis concluded dunque non dobbiamo disprezzare la preghiera vocale we must not despise vocal prayer noting that when the disciples asked jesus to pray he taught them the our father Vocal prayer the Holy Father said in conclusion is the only sure way to direct to God the questions he wants to hear. I'm Christopher Wells. Pray for God's blessing my dear friends. May almighty God bless you. 
द फादर एंड द सन एंड द होली स्पिरिट ए मैन वी थैंक रेवरेंट फादर नोएल टिकुन्ना फॉर शेयरिंग हिज रिफ्लेक्शंस ऑन द रीडिंग्स टुडे एंड वी रिमेंबर ऑल दोज हु आर सेलिब्रेटिंग दियर बर्थडे टुडे स्पेशली Brother Hilary Rodriguez Carmelite, Brother Richard Francis a Carmelite, Aaron Arthur Menezes from Mumbai presently in Oman, Glen Kutina from Nirmarga, Mangalore, Sherlin Wesley Kotian from Pune. Joseph De Souza from Kanjur Marg Mumbai and Regan Jose De Souza from Madikeri wish you all a happy birthday god bless you Helen Fernandez from Bengaluru and Thelma De Souza from Mumbai are celebrating their golden jubilee of life congratulations dear friends may god bless you and your intentions Gerald and Monica Lobo from Mudbelle presently in Dubai are celebrating their 15th anniversary of wedding life congratulations god bless you and we pray for the departed soul of Anthony Alfonso from Car Mumbai may the lord grant him eternal rest that's all for today my dear friends we continue to pray for all those who are affected by covid-19 may the lord have mercy on all of us thank you see you tomorrow